بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد ايها الاحبه في الله as a reminder from myself and my brothers and sisters in Islam and really many of our problems in the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can be dealt with and educated by ilm al by knowledge of the religion and this is a characteristic of ahl sunnah Shaykh Muhammad Ibn Umar Bazmul Hafidhullah Ta'ala said Wal ilm indahum huwa i'tibal athar He's talking about knowledge with uh, Ahl Sunnah Wal ilm indahum huwa i'tibal athar Fuhum yaj, yajma'oon al ayat wal ahadith wal athar al warada an sahaba wa yatafaqoon fiha ويتبعون كلام السلف ولا يحدثون من الأقاويل في فهم النصوص ما يخرجون به عن عن كلام الصحابة رضي الله تعالى عنهم. The Sheikh said, knowledge to them is following the athar, meaning those narrations. For verily they, meaning Ahl Sunnah. They collect the verses, you know, they, they study and, 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 and practice the verses and the ahadith, the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, and the athar mentioned on the sahaba, meaning those narrations mentioned on the sahaba and they gain the knowledge and the insight and the basira into it, yatafaquna fiha. Meaning they get fiqh fi deen. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man yuridullahu bihi khayran yifakahu fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. We yattabi'oona kalam as-salaf. And they follow the speech of the salaf. This is why it's so important. This is why it's a reminder for me. Because sometimes we get soft. Sometimes we get caught up. We say, well, this is the modern times and we have new messiah and we have new issues and we have new this. And then we forget. But And it can enter the heart to where you begin to think, well, you know, maybe there's more maslaha, maybe there's more benefit in doing such and such and doing such and such instead of following exactly like Kitabi la wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the fahim of the sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala wa This happens. This happens. May Allah protect us and preserve us. So that's why we need this reminder. So the shaykh said, we yet tabi'una kalam as-salaf wa la yuhadithuna min aqawil في فهم النصوص ما يخرجون به عن كلام الصحابة رضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين. He said, and they follow the speech of the salaf, and they do not in, uh, speak with newly invented ways of speech or or following new ways and new paths for understanding the nasus في فهم النصوص as he said for understanding the text. Instead, they go with those classical interpretations of Kitabi la wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to the faham of the salaf. And this is what distinguishes Ahl sunnah, this is what distinguishes the salafis from other groups and other sects. Because there are so many that want to take shortcuts in such and such, and such area. There are those who even have a lot of the aqidah of Ahl sunnah, but then they go astray in the issue of takfir and jihad. And they're extreme. And when they go extreme, they go against the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. Look at groups like ISIS. Look at Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab kills people in the malls. Al-Shabaab raids uh, uh, colleges and universities, killing women and, and, and the boys in the, studying in the university. What type of Islam is this? What type of dawah is this? Who are you calling? You're calling to blood and evil, and it's more in common... With Marxism and chaos and the ideology of Hitler, then it has anything to do with Islam. How can you do this in the name of Allah Azza wa Jal? Wa'iyadun billah min ahl al-shar wa zandaka wa kufr wa kithab kithabun wa'iyadun billah min hawalai 
Mubtadi'een. May Allah protect us from the those people of innovation who distort the religion of Islam. So they try to find new ways. So the Shaykh said, getting back to what the Shaykh said, وَيَتَّبِعُونَ كَلَامَ salaf, And they follow the speech of the Salaf. And they do not follow newly invented uh, speech or newly invented aqwal with regards to understanding those classical texts. And then he, it's muqayyid what he says, it's restricted. So he says, مَا يَخْرُجُونَ بِهِ عَنْ كَلَامَ sahaba, Meaning, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, that if there is, uh, of course there's new issues, and we need fiqh, and we need ijtihad, and we need the ulama to look at these issues and new technology and new things and how to practice it and how to understand the religion, and to go back to the Qur'an and go back to the sunnah. But what's imperative is that when we deal with these new issues, that it still doesn't go outside of how the Sahaba and the Salaf how they understood the religion. Of course they didn't have these new issues. And there are new things, new ways of understanding the world. This is not what we're talking about. But we're talking about Ahlul Sunnah, you'll see that they still go back to those Nasus, to the Quran and the Sunnah first and foremost. If they don't find anything in the Quran, they look for it in the Sunnah. If they don't find anything in the Sunnah, they look for it in the Kalam of the Salaf. And likewise. And so it's going back to that usul, to that foundation, rather than trying to make up another usul, a new foundation. And I'm going to end with this beautiful, very relevant uh, quote from Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah that the Shaykh brought. He said, Qala ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, al-ilm mashroor. وَالنَّسْكْ الْمَشْرُورِ مَخُوذْ عَنَ الصَّحَابَةِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعْلَىٰ أَصْحَابَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ وَأَمَّا مَا جَاءَ عَمَّنْ بَعْدِهِمْ فَلَا يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يَجْعَلْ أَنْ يَجْعَلَ الْأَصْلٍ وَإِنْ كَانَ صَاحِبُهُ مَعْذُورًا بَلْ مَعْجُورًا لِإِجْتِهَادْ أو تَقْلِيدْ This is a beautiful statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah where he said knowledge is legislated. And those actions uh, of the rights and so forth are legislated. And they are taken from the companions of of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As for what came after them, then it is not permissible to take these things as an asl, as an usul. So you have to be careful that even when we have our mashaykh that we love dearly, that maybe a shaykh who's known for the sunnah, but he says this is a qaida, this is a principle that this principle has to be checked. Is it in accordance with the Kitab al Sunnah? Because you will find mistakes. You will find mistakes. Sometimes, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Kulu ibn Adam khata wa khayna khatayna tawabin. Tawabun. All the children of Adam make sins, and the best of those who sin are those who repent. So you'll find mistakes. So we have to see is the qa'ida, is the principle that the Shaykh is mentioning in such and such book or on his tongue in this lecture and he's read, making refuting this one and that one with this qaida hal is it uh, does it go back to evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf if it doesn't then we you can't accept that as a asl in the deen so this is what Shaykh al-Islam is saying so he said فَلَا يَنْبَغِي and yajal aslan. It's not a. Uh, it's not permissible to take that as an asl of the religion. Wain kana sahibahu, sahibahu, ma'dura. Even if the person who does it, meaning that they're a person from ahl uh, ilm, that they are excused, rather even rewarded because they made ijtihad. They made the sh earnest striving to get a, a ruling based on the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf. Or taqlid, or they were blind following. So this is very important for us to understand, and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Bless us with ilm nafir, uskin taibu, amina mutakabin, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.